Hey! Oh. So I just got an assignment for my operating systems course. And let's just say it's not something I particularly enjoy. The idea of this assignment is to actually read a 20 page chapter on something called virtual memory systems that were implemented in the 1970s. But as we all know, ain't nobody got time for that. So I'm gonna do that, but the only thing I know best. Now, without making this too boring, here's what I'm gonna do. First, I need to figure out a machine learning architecture that's the most suitable for my needs. Then I have to find the best implementation of that architecture. Then all that remains is to code it all up and then finally run the program. So after a lot of analysis and investigation and even more research, I figured out some stuff. But to explain all of that, let's go to the one place I do all of my explaining in, which is the Connector Studio. So I realized that for my task of tech summarization, I needed to use a neural network that's well suited for sequential data. And for that, there were already existing architectures such as RNNs, which is recurrent neural networks, as well as LSTMs, which are long short-term memory cells that allow a neural network to actually remember a part of the previous input so that they could use that to make better guesses for their outputs. But then I came across a magical thing called Transformers, which is a relatively new architecture discovered in 2017. And the whole idea behind that is to create a mathematical representation of attention, which then theoretically allows that model to remember all of the previous inputs and learn whichever part was most relevant, even if it happened at the beginning of a sentence of a paragraph that's 50 sentences long. So I knew what I needed to use. But then I also realized because of the amazing open source community all across the world, even transformers were improved furthermore by the work done by Google and OpenAI in the form of BERT and GPT, which is very common and recently was in the news for their amazing capabilities of generating stories, uh, being amazing conversational agents, and much more, even writing code. So I wanted to use all of this and see whichever worked best for me. And just as an other side note, I also used a model called XLNet. So all three of these models are basically pre-trained transformers, which means that they have already been trained on a huge chunk of a certain corpus in the English language. And all I needed to do was transfer learning, which is the idea of using a certain pre-trained model in a different domain. So that's exactly what I did. Okay, let's do this. So, to quote this all up, I've divided the problem into two sub-problems, where first, I'll tackle actually creating a function that takes input from a text file so that we can give it to our model. And in the second part, I'll actually create three different functions for each of the models that we need to use for our project. Okay, so now with the input function taken care of, all I need to do is create the three functions, one for the T5 model, one for the XLNet model, and one for the GPT-2 model. Okay, all right. Now with all of the code written, we have our program ready. And now all we need to do is run it and reap the benefits of not actually having to read 20 pages for an assignment. So let me run it right now. Okay, so for the first time when we run programs like these, the model actually has to be downloaded from the internet. And to make sure that we have it available the next time without an internet connection, so we can use it or tinker with it, we'll have to wait, let me just check how long. Oh, you I have PTCL. Two thousand years later. Oh. 
Okay. So the model's done downloading. Um, now we can actually get to using it and reaping the benefits and I cannot wait. So let's go. Okay, so another thing I learned as part of working on this project is the fact that sometimes there are machine learning models that are really huge. So for them, expecting them to return an output right then and there is a bit unrealistic. So we actually, for these huge models, we'll have to wait just a tiny bit and then get our outputs. So I'm gonna give it these few more seconds and then expect an amazing result. So let's see if that happens. Yes! Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, may have gotten a bit carried away. But as you can see, the model not just works, but it works really well helping me reduce my workload by a significant amount so I can finally finish it on time. And there you go. That's how easy it is to create your own tech summarization model. I hope you all learned something while also having a little bit of fun as well. My goal with this series is to destigmatize the concept of artificial intelligence and debunk a few misconceptions that are very commonplace these days. I hope this video helped you a bit of that while also allowing you to be educated and entertained at the same time. If you have any ideas or suggestions about future videos, I'd really appreciate them. As I wanna make sure that this series is the best possible version of itself that it can be. And for that, I'll need all of your support. Thank you again so much for watching episode one of AI Does AI. And until the next episode, take care and goodbye.